Have you heard about the one with the Englishman, Irishman and the Scotsman? No, this isn't a joke. It's about a football tournament in Scotland you've got to hear about. So the Challenge Cup isn't new. It's the equivalent of England's Johnston's Paint Trophy where the teams in the lower leagues compete for something they actually have a chance of winning. But recently, it's changed. It's now called the Iron Brew Cup, or the Diddy Cup as it's sometimes known in the stands. And it's now inviting everyone and their dog to join in. It used to just be lower and non-league Scottish teams. But two years ago, Premiership teams were included in the form of their youth sides known as the Colts. And then the borders came down as well. Two Northern Irish teams came into the fold and two Welsh teams. Then last year, two Irish teams joined the party and not just any two, the fifth and sixth best sides. But they couldn't leave the English out. So this weekend, we'll see the fifth tier's third and fourth best sides, Boreham Wood and Sutton United, join the competition for two of the longest journeys in British football history. So why has this cup competition become so batshit crazy? Was it boring or are there bigger ambitions? Either way, it's time to ask, what the f*** is going on with the Iron Brew Cup? I think when you say Iron Brew Cup, I almost get excited. It seems very similar to how the English work the Johnson Paint Trophy. It's just a, a chance for the smaller clubs to maybe win a bit of silverware. I think it's important that you continue to have an open mind to what um, competition uh, can be. I think it probably looks quite crazy if you try to, ex to explain it to somebody else. It kind of hits home Scottishness. The Iron Brew Cup is the one that you know, it came in a couple of seasons ago. Um, and we weren't too sure how it would work. So the introduction of Colt teams uh, into the competition and in recent years the introduction of overseas teams as well. Bits of it are good, bits of it are not so good. We like it, um, it's different. For us one of the benefits of being in the competition was there's prize money. It adds a bit of excitement to the tournament now having these different teams to play. It's not often ever, as far as I know, that an English club's gone to Scotland to play in their competition and why not be the first one to go and do it? The excitement for the young players almost wetting their appetite for what it could be like moving forward. I was at the Dunfermline game on Saturday against Inverness. Um, before the game, everyone was talking about, oh, you go to the match, how are you getting there, you know, where are you staying, how long are you going for, all that sort of stuff. It, it almost felt like, you know, a real buzz about the, the, the competition. That's why, you know, the Iron Brew Cup's so crucial for us. Now, last year we went to Crusaders in Northern Ireland and we lost in the last couple of minutes um, away to a team who eventually played in the Champions League this year. But after that game, we had young players come and they asked, can we go alone? Because they enjoyed the experience of playing against men. So if we could replicate that more often, I'd be delighted. The changes haven't been positive. Kind of the reactions to the competition and the general feeling around the competition, it was, it was largely positive. For, for us, what we didn't want it to do was uh, cost us any money. We, we listened to the feedback from our clubs last year and, and we focused very much on making sure that our contribution towards expenses uh, was, was massively increased. Obviously we've got one of the, the longest trips uh, away in terms of the whole competition. And that's the other thing, you know, it's, it's, it's financially, it's a big cost. To, we didn't appreciate how big a cost it would be, you know, to, to get up to Glasgow. I think it's, it's, it's nearly £10,000 this trip. Yeah, I, I don't think that it's, it's quite right to ask fans to have to make a potentially long journey. To be flying to a game is, is probably unheard of for us. Um, I can understand the managers are maybe not that overly enamoured by that. You know, it's all very well, me saying it's great, looking forward to having a, a weekend away at the football, but, you know, the, the number one aim is to um, is to win the league. Uh, so far, it's only been a Scottish team that have won the competition. I think the kind of negative feeling around it has probably come from the addition of the, the non-Scottish teams. The level that they're coming from in England as well, that it does seem to be almost demeaning the competition a little bit. Yeah, the feedback's been mixed, and that, that's been from players, from clubs, uh, managers, the media. Um, everyone seems has had a, a slightly different perspective. I'm not convinced bringing in two teams from the Vanarama League it looks pretty great. I would have been quite happy to leave it as it was. Our Scottish clubs don't really like to be compared down to English clubs, but I think it's quite offensive, uh, especially to some of the championship clubs. I mean, what we've seen so far, it looks a very similar standard you know, to the top end of the National League. If there was two non-Scottish teams involved in the final, then I think that would, that would almost be the death of the competition. So if you're going to innovate, if you're going to invite others to join your party, you have to accept that there's a possibility that they may win the party. So our hope uh, is that the competition will continue to develop, uh, continue to promote uh, Scottish youth, um, but also to strengthen ties with the other associations in the British Isles. I think overall the competition, you know, has, has probably needed a boost. And I think by inviting the English teams into it, they're hoping that that's what it will do. I'm, I'm not sure what 
National League clubs in England coming into a Scottish lower league cup competition could really lead to. There is an argument to maybe bring some more teams from the Highland League or the Lowland League in instead of those teams. Um, I certainly would be in favour of that. I think, you know, it seems like they're trying to expand the competition every season. They seem to be adding more and more to it. So There's no question that in the longer term there will be far, far greater cross-border involvement, far greater cross-border competition uh, involved in Europe. And to be ahead of the game uh, seemed like a sensible thing to do. I'd probably be uncomfortable using the, the Ironbrew Cup changes as the sole reason to, to move forward with some kind of Atlantic League. A change is coming, but to have a, uh, a successful cross-border competition already in, in the stable uh, is, is helpful from, from our point of view, I think. I don't think it's really changed an awful lot with the court teams coming in. There seems to be more opposition from it. Certainly a desire to promote uh, the development of uh, Scottish youth uh, talent and it was felt that having Colt teams from the top 12 teams in the Labrooks Premiership uh, would help. For young players and having worked with them, they need that. They need that challenge, they need that test. They themselves physically need that for to go and play in people's first teams. People have talked about the introduction of Colt teams into a, a league setup. This perhaps gives us a, a taster of what it might look like in the future. I'm not sure the Colts teams bring an awful lot to the competition. It's an opportunity for our young players to play against you know, senior players effectively play against full-time professionals. I thought the Colts one originally was a good idea, but going at the res from the results over the last few campaigns, they've not really done very well. A lot of people have a voice about it, but if I'm honest, not a lot of people are educated. They just see a result. They see Hearts losing to Ross County, they see Motherwell losing to Crusaders. It's a worthwhile exercise. There's no point in doing it. It couldn't be further from the truth. We actually need more of it. If I was a player at one of these clubs, I, I wouldn't feel like I was being respected as such um, if I was being asked to, to play up against these under 21 players. So we're trying to get players in the our first team. This will almost fast track it. The Ambry Cup helps. I don't think that this is going to solve the Colts problem at all and, and make, allowing those players to, to make that step up to first team action for their respective Premiership clubs. I would like to think it would be potentially, you know, an opportunity for court teams to move into the league football somewhere. We're not asking to go into the Championship or even League Two. We're just asking to give us somewhere where we can potentially progress. Unless you're involved in it, and you see how a club runs and what a club wants to get out of it. It's, it's a brilliant initiative. I was a big fan of the competition uh, up until these changes. I think that it was a celebration of the smaller clubs in our country and, and the communities around those clubs. Um, I probably wasn't that overly fussed beforehand to see who um, Duffield got in this cup, um, but certainly now I'll, you know, watch, you know, look out for the job. I think that it, it should continue to be a celebration of the Scottish clubs and, and everything that we love about them. Now, I think it's, it's definitely got uh, a kind of negative sentiment around it um, and, and the inclusion, it, it all stems down from the inclusion of non-Scottish clubs and, and the Colt sides. If it was easy to revert, then I think people would get back on board with the competition. I think it's been a successful competition. I think it's really good. Let's keep an open mind. Uh, let's see how the, uh, this year's changes with the addition of the English teams, how those changes bed in, and let's keep an eye on the future. You know, as I say, there's, an, there's a strong argument for and against, um, and I understand both sides. You know, I, personally, I'm delighted that we've got the chance to see something different. I think it's one of those time will tell at the end of the competition whether it's been a success or or whether it hasn't. Different people will take from it different things and, and we know that whenever you innovate uh, it's not going to be entirely popular with anyone. Change is uncomfortable uh, but we believe that it's important that we continue to innovate, uh, we continue to try new things and see how they work.